Welcome to Uncover, the show dedicated to exploring what we need to know about God, the enemy, and ourselves to win the war for our destiny. Your host, Dr. Peggy Karlosky, psychologist, writer, and speaker, admits that there's no new truth, only that that hasn't been uncovered. And now, here's your host. Hello, and welcome to Uncover. I'm so glad you joined me. We have just been doing a series on the faithfulness of God. And we've had a couple of guests that have come on and told some stories about their life and where God was faithful in their lives. One of them was Geneva Davis, my mother, and she told of so many instances throughout her life where the Lord just came through for our family. Our last guest has been Nikki Payne, and wow, what a testimony of God's faithfulness. If you didn't listen to it, I just encourage you to go back and listen to both of those shows, and and you'll hear some remarkable stories of God's faithfulness. Well, you know, I got to thinking about what's next? What do we talk about next? And it kind of came to me, what about our faithfulness back to the Lord? You know, God's so faithful to us, and so many times He's faithful even when we're not. But don't we want to be called to be faithful back to Him? You know, there's times that we just get tired, and there's times we may get discouraged. And, you know, when I'm meeting with other people, sometimes I recognize that it's easy to try to just give up and get into a rut. I was talking to a woman just recently, and she'd had a lot of health issues and a lot of fatigue, and she just found herself kind of getting in a rut and just backing off of even seeking God very diligently. And that got me thinking even today about our topic, and I was asking the Lord, well, what what do I speak on today? And one of the things that came to my mind is another word, I guess, for faithfulness in, in our lives is how diligent are we? If you look up the word diligence, you know, and you look up the definition, we're going to hear things like being conscientious, being a hard worker, concentrating, putting forth great effort, a constant and an earnest effort to accomplish what is undertaking, undertaken. And I got to thinking about that. You know, we may have some, some areas in our life where we're very diligent. We may be diligent at our work. We may be diligent in a craft that we do or a hobby and so forth. But how diligent are we in being faithful to the Lord and doing the work of the Lord before us? How diligent are we in working on our marriages? Or um, one of them I realize is there's a lot of things that we're just not disciplined in with our finances or taking care of our bodies. But what about being diligent? in obeying God and seeking Him and doing our assignments. I ran across this quote from Irma Bombeck. I want to read it to you. When I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left and could say, I used everything you gave me. You know, I thought about that and I thought, wow, wouldn't that be wonderful? To be able, when we check out of this life, to say, I was diligent. I did not give up. You know, there's all kinds of scriptures where the Lord encourages us to be diligent and to not give up. I want to read you just a few of them. Proverbs 21, 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. Galatians 6, 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. You know, there's been some times in my life that, and I wonder if you've felt this way too, that seems like you're just trying and keeping on and keeping on and something that you're trying to do. It might be a job. It might be a ministry. And you think, am I making any difference? Am I getting ahead at all? And you might feel... I'm just kind of spinning my wheels. And then sometimes you'll get a glimpse of somewhere where God is really using what your efforts, that he appreciates it. It may be somebody telling you that 
you have really blessed them in their life and helped them. It might be something that comes through on a project you're working on or something in your life that, that you put great effort into and didn't see any headway. And all of a sudden, there it is. I think about this with the Galatians 6, 9, when it says at just the right time, we will reap a harvest. Sometimes I think in my own life and maybe I'm plugging along, working on something and feel like, why am I keeping on with this? It's not going anywhere. And then all of a sudden, it might be someone saying, wow, I read one of your blogs and it really ministered to me. Or it might be a client that I see a great breakthrough in something they've been struggling with. Or it might be I'm sewing into a relationship with my children and all of a sudden I see a, um, a real sign of maturity and spiritual growth. And there's those times when you feel like, wow, I'm not getting anywhere. I just encourage you, God never ignores our efforts. He sees what we're doing. There's too many scripture to back that up. Even, I, I've mentioned it to you many times probably on this show, but one of my favorite passages is in Chronicles where the prophet's saying, the eyes of the Lord are looking to and fro over the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. He had to be noticing our efforts to know whose heart is loyal to him, who really does love him. If we'll be diligent and not give up, he notices. And I encourage you, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's being you're being faithful even when somebody else is not being faithful, whether it's some kind of ministry that you keep working towards that you feel like God's calling you to, it's hard sometimes to keep being diligent when we don't see those rewards ahead of us, when we don't see the breakthroughs. But that's where I guess faith comes in, is being obedient anyway. Let me read you a few others. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Now think what that's saying. Give yourself fully to your work because your labor is not in vain. You may be thinking, oh, I keep doing this Sunday school class and the kids don't even listen and I'm just frustrated. I don't even think they're getting anything out of it. But the Lord sees your efforts. It may be that, you know, haven't you been at jobs before and Maybe you're on the job and you're just busting your butt trying to work so hard at your job and you feel like that there's other people that are lazy and not doing their part and you don't notice that any of the administration notices the difference. You may even work at a job where others are advanced that you know don't work as hard or maybe it's not even as capable as you are. I encourage you, the Lord sees your labor. It is not in vain. I can remember talking to a young girl one time and she worked at a job where she had a co-worker that was just making her miserable. Just a bad attitude and rude and just made the job so hard. And I remember saying to her, God sees your efforts. Something's wrong when you see that with that other person. Be diligent to you do the right thing whether they do or not. That person may be your assignment. You may be the one that leads them to the Lord, even though you'd like to tell them off. If we're diligent in doing well, not only God has rewards for us, but he notices, and sometimes those are our assignments. I'll read you a few others. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Whatever we do, do it as unto the Lord. The author of Ecclesiastes is trying to tell us, be diligent. Don't give up. It's easy to kind of get into a rut and be half-hearted in our efforts. I'm not trying to lay a, a lot of burden on you because the Lord tells us his burden is light. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. I'm not talking about all the shoulds and traditions we put on ourselves that aren't from God. I'm not talking about that legalistic pressure, but I'm talking about being diligent to keep loving the Lord, keep trying to do the right thing, to seek Him 
and to love him and to be a light to this lost world. Sometimes you may feel like your efforts aren't worth it. But the Lord sees it. 2 Thessalonians 3.13 But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary of doing good. Do you ever get weary of doing good? Do you think, what good does it do? It just seems like that the world and the people around me that I don't notice a difference. That kind of makes me think again of one of my favorite, again, I keep saying my favorite, but I have several favorite passages or passages that have really ministered to me. I think passages that speak to some of our struggles and encourage us. And one, and I think I've read it to you on this program before, but I want to talk to you about it again. It's in Malachi. And the people here were feeling like, what good does it do to serve the Lord? In fact, I'm picking up in Malachi uh, chapter 3, verse 14. You have said, it is useless to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked as mourners before the Lord of hosts? So now we call the proud blessed for those who do wickedness are raised up. They even tempt God and go free. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another and the Lord listened and heard them. Isn't that amazing to think he's listening? He hears. So a book of remembrance was written before him. For those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name, they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts. On that day that I make them my jewels, I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. I just want to encourage you. Sometimes it feels like that people are just doing their thing and you might get tired of Try to do the right thing when those around you don't even seem interested. God notices your efforts. And I call you to encourage other believers that might be getting tired and, and, and they're struggling with trying to be diligent to encourage each other. That's what he tells us, to encourage each other in the Lord. You know, the Bible talks about having the spiritual gift. Some have the spiritual gift of encouragement. It's a beautiful gift. And really... We should all operate in it some because he tells us to encourage each other and and be there for each other, even more so as you see the day approaching. It's another reason that we do need to not isolate and to come together. That's what church is too, is coming together. Because over and over, I want to say to you, not only is God faithful, but don't you want to be faithful back? Don't you want to check out of here and when you look back over your life, you know, you you know, even if you don't have a big bank account, if you never made a lot of fame and fortune, or you never got that figure you wanted, or that house of your dream house, you know, it's great to have nice things, but won't it be the most wonderful thing to think, I was diligent. I didn't give up. I didn't do it perfectly, but I ran my race. The Lord notices, and I just encourage you, don't give up in being diligent. And Again, when you're tired, let him comfort you. Don't get caught up in all the traditions and the legalistic stuff. But instead, be diligent in knowing that God is good and that he loves you and he appreciates your efforts, even if those around you don't seem to notice. And if you don't see the results and you don't feel like you're making a difference, trust that you are. I just encourage you to think about who you may need to encourage do you need to encourage that coworker? Do you need to encourage that son or that daughter that you may be looking and thinking, wow, they don't seem very spiritually motivated, you know, and sometimes we think as our children are growing up that they just don't seem to be interested in things of God or maybe they're, they're sowing their wild oats or maybe you see that they just seem to neglect church and, and things that you've tried to teach them. Don't give up. Recognize your prayers make a difference and God sees your efforts and he will reward them. And he will work on that son and that daughter and that husband or whoever you are praying for diligently. Diligence can come in different forms. It may come from being a hard worker. It may come from your prayers. It may be coming from you praising the Lord. But 
we need to think about what's worth being diligent about. I just encourage you with those words today. And I just um, ask you to search your own heart and recognize where you may need encouragement. Find and seek those who will help you with encouragement. I thank you for listening, and I look forward to another episode of Uncover.